Dubliners is a literary masterpiece that stands as a testament to the triumphs and tribulations of the city's soul, its people. The supreme question about a work of art is out of how deep a life does it spring. James Joyce is a name that has become synonymous with great literature as well as difficult reads. His works have fascinated people and captured imaginations for over a hundred years. Vladimir Nabokov once remarked, my English is pat ball to Joyce's champion game. And Joyce Carol Oltz boldly claims, Ulysses is certainly the greatest novel in the English language, and one might argue for it being the greatest single work of art in our tradition. However, amidst his challenging works, there is one piece that stands as a beacon of clarity, Dubliners which is easily the best place to start with getting to know this literary giant and 20th century Dublin. Today I want to cover with you, what is Dubliners? Why is it important? Most importantly, why should you read it in terms of the historical and cultural context and talk to you about some things that might help you get the most out of your reading before you read Dubliners. So to begin with, what is Dubliners? And uh-oh, you've already done it and opened the can of worms. Something as well studied as James Joyce. <laughs> Some people will say it's about home rule and nationalism. Others say it's about alienation or paralysis and stagnation of Dublin society. Well, who's right? The answer is all of them, actually. This is James Joyce's most human work. And that is to say that humans have a lot of layers. So there's a lot of elements to the story that you could possibly find to relate to. It's a collection of 15 short stories offering poignant vignettes into the lives of 20th century Dubliners. Within the pages, we're going to encounter tales of unrequited love as well as people wrestling with the frustrations of their future. One of the most renowned stories, Arby, follows a boy as he confronts the realization that his fantasies don't always align with reality. And in the ultimate expression of this collection, The Dead, a grand party unfolds, revealing the masks people wear in society and profound regrets that we carry. Originally published in 1914, this book exudes with over a decade's worth of Joyce's experiences and writing. But just to call it a collection of 15 short stories would be a big disservice to what Joyce really accomplished. Every word, every sentence carries history. It carries momentum, the way that it builds upon itself. James Joyce even tells us himself, I have tried to present it to the indifferent public under four of its aspects, childhood, adolescence, maturity, and public life. The stories are ranged on this order. So the book treads through these patterns of life. In the opening story, The Sisters, the simplicity of the language pervades, and we see how we experience life in the same way that we would as a young child, only to learn as we grow up through childhood the mischievousness and realization that sometimes our goals and fantasies don't always align with our experiences. And near the end of maturity, we have the introspective pondering of life and our failed decisions. Every time I look back and have regrets or failed to move forward on something, there's a Dubliner letting me know that I'm not alone in this struggle called life. So the way that these stories build upon each other and carry history, it's something that I don't know if any other author has truly accomplished. My intention was to write a chapter in the moral history of my country, and I chose Dublin for the scene because the city seemed to me the center of paralysis. But why is this book so important? Well, Dublin has gone on to be the muse for many famous writers, from Oscar Wilde all the way up to Samuel Beckett, but there's something about the time period in which James Joyce writes. Ireland had endured a long history of subjugation from England, and Dublin sat as the throne for English rule, its people never free to lead the country in a way that wasn't someone else's whims and desires. You'll meet the shadows of legendary figures such as Charles Stuart Parnell, who basically gave his life for Irish home rule and freedom from England. And in this book, the characters carry that weight, crushed by time, crushed by opportunity. In many ways, Dublin felt like a prison the way that we all have these responsibilities that we carry. Our responsibilities to our children, to our spouses, to our parish, to our religion. The weight that they bore was perhaps too immense. And I think we apply that today as our own pressures come in and we learn how to adjust and where to break when it comes to these. 
Henri Bergson is a famous French philosopher who said that to get to know a city, you have to experience it. Well, to get to know 20th century Dublin, you can't really go there and talk to those people anymore. It's long gone. The closest we have is the art and the literature to interacting with these people. And I think this is a book that comes the closest to doing that. You have enthusiasts of James Joyce who walk the streets and follow the same paths that these characters do to get try to get closer to understanding what they really felt. You have artists such as Frank Keeley who even recreates each of these scenes in his art in a more modern way. It's a true testament to the longevity and understanding of the human spirit that James Joyce accomplished. While we all agree the social importance is there for Ireland, how does that intersect with your life? Well, reading James Joyce is a game of inches. And what do I mean by that? When we look at a lot of the skills we look at getting better at in life, whether it's a sport or, or martial art, the same skills that they use in the junior league are the same skills they use in the professional league. It's just the difference is an inch and a second. The professional is able to get things just that much tighter and closer, and that's what James Joyce's writing is. It's laser focused on these human emotions and complexities that we experience that a lot of other works fail to really hone in on. Now, it probably shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but there are a lot of studies out there that talk about how reading can improve one's empathy. That is to understand what other people are going through. So if we take a piece of art that is fine tuned to the exact trials and tribulations that we experience in an everyday mundane life, well, that's kind of like gaining a superpower to better understand the people around you and to better equip yourself to handle these situations when it pops up. You're going to meet a Lenahan at one point in your life. You've already known at least a couple of Mrs. Kearney's from this story. Understanding motivations behind people and why we do the things that we do is one of the most valuable skills that you could ever develop in your adult life. All right, so let's talk about a couple of things that will get you the most out of your reading. We can't talk about Dubliners without talking about paralysis and the stagnation of society. The do-nothing Dubliners, as they say. Well, a subscriber once pointed out to us that paralysis, another way to look at it, is you were offered the opportunity to say yes, and you didn't take it. How many times are you going to experience that in life? The ability to move forward in a relationship, to move forward with a job opportunity at the cost and risk of something else. It's something that is probably a daily occurrence at a small and eventually reaches the large. And that's what Joyce is really good at playing with, the large of the city and how that impacts the small of the person who's afraid to perhaps stand out or to challenge the status quo or feels that he's powerless. And it's the small of the person failing to make decisions and stuck in paralysis that fails to impact the large of society when you have everyone making these stagnation decisions. When you go through Dubliners, you might be frustrated and feel that there's clearly a right answer, but I think slowing down and exploring what this paralysis and this stagnation means is an important part to understanding and analyzing your own decisions in life. The other thought that comes up a lot is, of course, epiphanies and these moments of realization. Well, let's slow down and read what Joyce's interpretation of epiphany is. He told us in his portrait novel, it's a sudden spiritual manifestation whether in the vulgarity of speech or of gesture, or in a memorable phase of the mind itself. It's in these moments that characters begin to realize their limitations, whether it be in themselves or pressures from society. It's this complex landscape that makes Dubliner such a rich literary masterpiece to continue to return to. Which is another thing that seems to pop up is this alienation and the search for personal identity. Let's put it this way. There's a very clear pattern of humans wanting to take what they have and make it better, to improve, to push society forward. But as we move forward as humans, there's also another pattern. Whether we're looking at it from childhood, where we always have whoever's in class is my friend. It doesn't matter who you are, you can hang out with them. To high school, we start to develop these cliques and our social circle might shrink a little bit, but it's still quite large. Generally what happens is through college, through marriage, through the end of our life, our social circle continues to shrink. The people that we can rely upon and trust continues to shrink. And that creates a lot of loneliness. It's something that we're going to face and that you'll see the characters face and struggle with, why didn't I keep up that relationship? Why didn't I keep up that contact with that person? So looking back at that person's comments about the failure to say yes to an opportunity, 
with whether you drive into yourself or rely upon others. And ultimately how you decide to live your life is something that I think is extremely relatable and something that you may be looking back at at some point in your life. Sometimes life requires forward motion, I guess. <laughs> so as I said, there's a lot of different ways to look at Dubliners. You have more controversial interpretations that, yeah, we're gonna dive into that right away with the sisters, uh, but each story has many different facets to discuss. And we thought we'd take a couple of these, unturn some rocks, maybe some that are turned over less, and get the conversation going. Let's talk about some ways that we can interpret these stories, but leave plenty of stones unturned for you, the reader, as well, to come back and explore and find out what it means in your own life. There's a couple of different versions of this book. I have the Penguin Centennial, but both this and the regular Penguin will have plenty of footnotes at the end. These footnotes can be very useful as there are a lot of Irish terms and Irish specific customs that you may not be familiar with. Part of our discussions here are to talk through those, the differences, and why would James Joyce potentially have put them into the stories. You could go all out and hit that Richard Elman biography as it is a, there's just a, a wealth of information out there on James Joyce and there's scholars that know way more. But for me, Literature is a personal journey. It's something where we're trying to extract value and understand a little bit more about ourselves and others around us. So we're just two friends. Imagine going to a coffee shop and being a part of a book club where you're just like, what did that mean? Like, this was crazy. That's what we're gonna be doing in this series in the playlist down below. A special super thanks to all of you out there that are still watching. If you did, if you could help feed the ever hungry YouTube algorithm with like a little clover to let them know that you appreciated or liked this video, I would love that. I'll leave a link to our Patreon links down below if you're looking to support us in any way. And I appreciate the time you spent with us today. My name has been Una. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on James Joyce's masterpiece, Dubliners. Dubliners.